What is up, my friends? Christine Moore here. It is day 50. <laughs> day 50, five zero of the 77 day video challenge. Welcome. Uh, this is actually take two because, yeah, uh, good old Wi Fi issues. So here I am again. Uh, but yeah, today is a very important topic healing from trauma. So this, pa this past few days, I've been talking about, uh, let's see, I've been talking about emotional abuse, how to identify it, uh, the causes of it, and what healthy relationships look like. And so I uh, wanted to discuss trauma today <sighs> because so many of the people that I work with I am a peer recovery coach. So many of the people that I work with, including myself, have dealt with some form of trauma on different levels in, in their life. Some, some of them now, some of them in the past. So let's dive into it, shall we? All right, so first of all, if when we don't heal from trauma, trauma literally will get stuck in our bodies and it will manifest in different ways. Some of us struggle with mental health issues, anxiety, depression. Some of us literally will get sick in our bodies. Um, other people will abuse the people in their lives and it's it just keeps going and going until, you know, until we deal with it and heal from it. So uh, for me, when I was a kid growing up and even into my young adulthood, I thought when I heard the word trauma, I thought, okay, something drastic like uh, wars, uh, the not, you know, 9-11, school shootings, tragic car accidents, uh, someone close to us dying unexpectedly, rape, and things like that. That's what I thought trauma was, and it is. Those are extremely traumatic. And <clears throat> for those of you who don't know me, um, so I struggled with addiction for 15 years, and I've been in therapy on and off since 2010. So I've learned over the past 12 years Trauma can show up in so many different ways and on so many different levels. Uh, I've, I learned that never hearing the words I love you growing up is trauma. I've also learned that enduring emotional abuse from a partner or a loved one is considered trauma. It's traumatic. So um, I'm not a trauma therapist this is trauma is not like my specialty uh, but as a recovery coach I work with a lot of people who have experienced trauma and are in the healing process so I wanted to talk about it so let's first of all let's just go over what exactly is trauma I got my notes here hang on one second so a lot of people think that trauma is an event like an injury, which it can be. You know, an injury can be extremely traumatic, um, but trauma is a response to a traumatic event. It's a response to a deeply disturbing or distressing event. So a lot of people, um, they, a lot of people, for a lot of people, they think, it's the physical, such as a traumatic injury, but actually it can be emotional, verbal, and even spiritual. It's also, to rem to, it's also important to remember that wounds that you can't see hurt just as much as the ones that you can see. And actually the ones that you can't see, they can take even longer to heal. I know some of you, like I know this, I've seen this many times, P 
people who are finally ready to talk about their trauma you know they go to close friends or they go to a small group in their church and there's that super positive friend or Christian friend and they have really good intentions and it's coming from a, a, you know their heart and they go and they quote Romans 8 28 and we know that God works all things for good to those who love him and have been called according to his purposes which is very true I'm not denying that at all but not exactly what you want to say to someone who has just experienced trauma or if they're like still bleeding from it if they have not healed from it probably not the best thing to say at that time um, okay so moving forward uh, sorry so any anybody who grew up when I did you know um, I'm 45 now and I know a while back whenever I heard the word trauma I would just hear oh you know trauma slama it's uh, just get over it you know <laughs> it's just rub some dirt on it you know and we don't just get over a trauma it doesn't work that way we have to heal from trauma there is no just getting over it trauma is trauma and it can go deep 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 and if it's not dealt with it will manifest in unhealthy ways so there's three types of trauma that I want to go over there's acute trauma chronic trauma and complex trauma so acute trauma is a response from just a one-time event. So an example would be a major car accident, or maybe you're someone who lost your business during COVID. Maybe, uh, I know, oh gosh, I know several women who have suffered miscarriages. I know many people who have been date raped. So acute trauma is a response from a one-time event. Chronic trauma is long a long-term response from prolonged or repeated events so maybe you were someone who was bullied in school you know during all of elementary all of middle school <clears throat> or maybe uh, you experienced racism your whole life uh, maybe you were exposed to porn at a young age and because of that you struggled with uh, with it for many many years after or maybe you grew up with alcoholic parents <clears throat> your child your whole childhood and you were always walking on eggshells maybe you were sexually abused from someone who was supposed to love you and protect you that is chronic trauma then there's complex trauma which is a combination pretty much of everything that we talked about. It's multiple and ongoing events. Uh, there is, you know, there could be chemical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, and the list can go on. So at many levels, trauma changes you. It can change your perspective on life. It can change how you see people. It can also um, change how you see God. Um, so just a, a, a quick personal example of some trauma that I experienced when I was a very young girl, okay? Uh, when I was three years old, I, I'll never forget, I was in my room and then all of a sudden I could smell smoke and I could hear my mom yelling and my brother yelling and I remember walking into the living room and like peering over into the kitchen and there was this huge grease fire huge and pretty much our the kitchen burned down basically and so to this day anytime I smell smoke like if someone blows out a candle and I smell smoke I'm like where's it coming from where is it where is it is there a fire and that is because of what happened when I was young so I'm just very sensitive to that so that's just a personal example 
Now, in the Bible, we can learn so much about trauma and how to heal from trauma from Paul. Paul, he experienced all three levels of trauma. <clears throat> so Paul, who used to be Saul before he was a Christian, he was out persecuting and killing Christians. And then one day, God just knocked him down and, he, and Paul became, or he was Saul at the time, he became blind. And so then three days later, God healed him and that is when he converted and became a Christian and then he, he devoted his entire life to teaching and preaching about Jesus. And he experienced so much persecution and experienced severe trauma his entire life. If you read 2 Corinthians, you can, you can see how, how Paul processed his trauma. Okay, he didn't just hold it in, he talked about it. And so number one, the first step to healing from trauma is that we no longer, we cannot stay silent about it. We cannot hold it in or brush it under the rug or ignore it or pretend it didn't happen, okay? The first step is we have to acknowledge it. We have to acknowledge it. And again, some of you are ignoring it. Some of you are putting it aside and acting like it never happened. We don't heal from trauma when we ignore, stuff it, right? We have to acknowledge and say, I was, fill in the blank, I was abused. I was raped or I was abandoned, I was hurt. We have to confess. We have to never, no longer stay silent, but to acknowledge it. That is the first step. We start to heal when we take it to God. Unfortunately, some people think that if they pray and give it to God, then that's all it takes. But my friends, it doesn't work that way. Taking it to God is the first step. And I promise you, he is faithful to be there while we heal. He is so faithful to be there while we heal. And I know so many friends and people that I work with in their darkest moments is when they feel God the most when they are the closest, they feel the closest to him because he's there to help us, to, to be there in the process. And he brings people and opportunities into our life to help us to heal. So many people, when it comes to healing from trauma, instead of seeking connection, they prioritize protection. I'll say that again. Instead of seeking connection, they prioritize protection. And the reason why is because when we finally are ready to deal with our trauma and to talk about it and to process it, it is extremely difficult. It is extremely difficult because essentially we have to relive it and reprocess it in a way where you know we can heal from it so just an example say that um, you injure your knee and you have to get major surgery and then you have to go through rehabilitation and sometimes or pretty much all the time rehabilitation is even more painful than the injury itself right same thing with trauma we have to go through the rehab we have to process it so number one is acknowledging it number two is we process it and the way that we process it is we bring it to God and then we bring it to others that we trust so that could be a therapist that could be a small group it could be your community it could be friends that you trust because 
we do not heal in isolation ever we do not heal in isolation <clears throat> Instead of taking our pain to trusted people, we often push trusted people away. We heal in community. We heal in therapy. We heal in our support system. We heal with other godly people because the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. So we confess to each other. We are better together and we pray together so that we will be healed. So if you ignore the pain, the wound is still there and we end up going to something else to cope. Could be drugs, could be alcohol, food, working too much, sex, shopping, etc. Right? <clears throat> okay. Next. I love 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 28. I'm not going to read it now, but Paul, he so clearly processes his trauma and his pain. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 28, Paul is in prison. He, five times he suffered 39 lashes, three times he was beaten with rods. He was stoned, he was shipwrecked, he almost starved to death, he almost froze to death, and many, many, many other things. In 2 Corinthians 1, 8, it says, we were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despised life itself. I don't know about you guys, but I know that I have felt that way and I resonate exactly with what Paul is saying in 2 Corinthians 1.8. I've been in such a dark place where I felt so much pressure. I felt like it was too much to endure and I despised life itself. I've been there and so I, I understand that and it's important to process and talk about that. <clears throat> if you have ever felt hurt so deeply that you felt like you didn't want to go on, just know that you are not alone. You are not alone. The person <laughs> who wrote basically two-thirds of the New Testament, he felt the same way. Paul talked about his pain and he processed it with other believers. So again, number one acknowledge the pain and number two process the pain take it to God and to trusted people next we all have a thorn right we all have something in our life that we wish we didn't have I know I'm going through some stuff right now that um, that I wish I wasn't having to go through and I'm sure you have something too. But this is something that really inspires me. <clears throat> In scripture, Paul pleaded for God to take away his everything he was going through three separate times. He prayed, he pleaded, but there's one thing that he never did. He never blamed God for it. He never blamed God for it. My friends, we can take our hurt to God over and over and just completely unload on him. <laughs> you, It's okay to say, God, I don't understand this. I don't understand why this is happening. We can be honest and not hold back. We can say, God, I don't, I don't understand and how, how, how could you allow this to happen? God's not surprised by that. He knows we're human. He knows that we hurt. But you know what? It also says that he's in the Bible, he says, cast all your cares onto God. Cast all your cares onto God. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. My grace, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made 
perfect in my weakness. Isn't that beautiful? It's so comforting. 2 Corinthians 12, 10, Paul said this, in all the persecution, every hardship he was going through, this I aim to be like Paul if whenever I go through something difficult. He says this in 2 Corinthians 12, 10, for Christ's sake, I delight in my weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. Because when I am weak, he is strong. For when I am weak, he is strong. My friends, true healing only comes when we are in the presence of God, when we take our trauma, our hurts to God. And nothing can change our past. Nothing. But God can heal our broken hearts. Thank you, Lord. Nothing can change our past, but God can heal our broken hearts. Again, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 4, God is our comforter. God is our comforter. And this is the last point I want to make. Not everyone is ready to hear this unless you have really started to heal from your trauma. But we pursue purpose in our trauma. We pursue purpose in our trauma. People don't want to hear this early on because once we heal from our trauma, once we can talk about it and not relive it and not bleed from it, we can then help others and comfort them with our story. There is purpose in your pain, my friends. There is purpose in your pain. Many of you that are watching this right now, you're not okay right now. You are hurt, you are angry, you are tired, and many of you are going through something right now. Not only can you be healed from trauma, <clears throat> but you can become so much stronger because of it. You can become so much stronger because of the trauma. And then we can say Romans 8, 28, our God works everything out for good to those who love him and are called according to his purposes. So my call to action today is this. Write this down. Whew. The trauma that you experience, my friends, that might not have even been your fault. <laughs> but pursuing God for your healing is your responsibility. I'll say that again. The trauma that you experienced even though it may not have been your fault. But pursuing God for healing is your responsibility. You don't have to live the rest of your life as a victim. You are not a victim any longer. You're an overcomer. You are an overcomer. So again, no more silence. It's time to come out of the hiding, out of isolating. It's time to acknowledge, confess, talk to God, process the pain, process it with others, therapy, trusted friends, your community, your small groups. It's time to heal. It's time to process it. Then pray for one another. 
There is healing. There is hope. And my friends, when you heal, you become stronger. And then there's purpose in your pain. There's purpose in your story. And your story is then to go and comfort others and help them to heal. Woo! Mm -mm. That is so good. Thank you, Lord. You are so good. Thank you that you are with us and you help us, God. I don't know about you guys, but life be life in right now. Life be life in. <laughs> so it's time. It's time. Take it to God. Ask him. Talk to him. Question him. He already knows. He already knows. Find a therapist. Find a group of friends. Build your support system. Then, once you're able to talk about the trauma that you went through, and it not trigger you, and, not, and you're not bleeding from it, then it's time to turn that pain into purpose and comfort If you have any questions, I'm here. If you need someone to talk to, I'm here. And if you need help finding a therapist, I can help you with that as well. And I love you. I'm here for you. Thank you for checking this out. Please share this out. Please, please share this out. Because I know someone else needs to hear this. And I will see all of you beautiful souls tomorrow for day 51. God bless and have a great evening.